By the end of this video, your software will be able to do something like this. The most essential thing that we need to have to save pages is a server socket, which is what we're going to look at today. Before we jump into it, just a quick reminder, give us a thumbs up for the video if you like, and subscribe to the channel. So at this point, our server doesn't do much. We are able to get some configurations into the server using the configuration manager that we did on the last tutorial. And it also does some printing, but that's not really relevant. It's just to make it pretty. Now, to save some pages, we need our server to do at least two things. One, it needs to handle TCP connections because the browsers are going to connect to the server and the server must be able to send the pages to the browser. And it needs to understand the HTTP protocol. On this tutorial, we are going to focus ourselves on the TCP connections. And to do that, we are going to make it really, really simple. We are going to make three restrictions to our server. The first one, our server is just going to allow one connection at a time. So we have one browser, it's going to connect to the server, and we're going to serve a page to that browser. That's it. The second one is it's going to be really, really dumb. It's not going to understand the HTTP protocol. It's going to disregard everything that the browser sends to the server. The third one is we are always going to serve the same hard coded web page. This is going to give us a starting point so that in the next tutorials, we are going to make this multi threaded so it can accept many connections at the same time. And then we are going to implement the HTTP protocol and make it serve pages that fulfill requests that this that the browsers are doing. So let's get started. The first thing that we need is a server socket like this. A server socket is a socket that is going to listen to a specific port. So we create the server socket and we pass to the server socket the port that we gather from the configuration manager like this. Because the server socket deals with IL to make it really simple, I'm going to surround it with a try catch clock over here. And now I'm going to say server socket dot accept. What accept does is it prompts the socket that's listening to a port to accept any connections that arise. When it gets a connection over there, it's going to return a socket, which is a direct means of communicating with that entity that connected to the sockets to the server socket. Also, another thing that's very important when we say accept, basically the code executes till this point and at this point accept, it's going to stop and wait to get a connection. If it doesn't get a connection, it doesn't execute further. It just stays there waiting for the connection. Now, if we were to read something from the socket, we would get the input string. this and we would use the input string to read the request from the browser and to write to the socket we are going to use the output string so we get it from the socket as well notice here that we only use the server socket to accept the connection once we accept we use the socket that is returned by the accept so at this point over here we would do the reading and then we would do the writing so so that I don't forget I'm going to close the sockets over here the the streams over here close, I'm going to close the socket as well and the server socket as well like this So because we are going to disregard everything that comes from the browser, we are not going to do the read and we are just going to focus on the writing. So now let's define the page that we would like to send to the browser. So to do that, I'm going to define a string called HTML. Like so, and I'm going to create a, an HTML page. So HTML, Close like this. It's going to have a head. It's going to have a body as well. 
this. Inside the head, I'm going to have a title. And the title is going to say simple Java HTTP server. And inside the body, we are just going to have a header one with this page was served using my simple Java HTTP server. That's about it. Now, if we were to send the HTML like this to the browser straight away, just this string, the browser wouldn't know what to do with it. And the reason is it's not wrapped in some kind of HTTP response. So I'm going to create another string. I'm going to call it response. And because we haven't talked about the HTTP protocol, I'm going to write a few things down, which I'll explain to you as I go. But this is part of the HTTP protocol, and we'll look into it with in more detail in the next tutorial. So the first line that we send on the response, it's going to be a status line. So I'll say that this is the status line of the response. Like this. And the status line has an HTTP version, a space, a response code, a space, a re response message. That's it. So for our response, I'm going to say HTTP 1.1. The response code is going to be 200. And the response message is going to be OK. Now, after the status line, we need to send two special characters, the carriage return and the line feed. So I'm going to define them here. So final, I'm going to make it final because they're not going to change. Carriage return line feed equals to slash n slash r. Later on, we are going to use bytes instead of a string. But for the time being, just for the record, this is 13 and 10 ASCII. So here we add the CRLF like this. Okay. Now, after the status line, we are also going to want to send some headers. In our case, we are just going to send one header. And the header that we want to send is the content length. So, semicolon, space, and the content length is going to be the size of the message that we want to send. So, we got HTML, get bytes, length, like this. And after the length, we want to send a new carriage return line feed, because all headers finish with a CRLF. And to signify that we are finished with the, with the headers, we send an extra carriage return line feed, like so. Now we send the HTML and we send to carriage returns line feed like this. So our response, which is now compliant with uh, HTTP 1.1, is just going to be this. To write to the output stream, get the output stream that we've collected before, and we do write. And we send the response, but in bytes, like so. So let's give it a try. We execute the server. And let's give it a try. And this is our simple server serving its first outcoded page. As you can see, after we finish writing, we close everything and we let the, the program exit. So it stopped, ex it stopped executing at this point, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, for the next tutorial, we are going to look at removing this from our main method because we really don't want to be working with a server sock inside our main method. So we are probably going to use a thread to handle the server socket and possibly even uh, creating further threads to handle each, co each connection that we get to the from browsers. We'll start looking at the HTTP protocol and start composing some wrapper classes that 
with the HTTP protocol. And we are going to look at some RFCs that define the HTTP communication protocol. So I hope you enjoyed. And if you want to follow along this tutorial series, don't forget to subscribe and like and leave me any comments that you have. See you in the next tutorial.